Hi there, my name is Corey Truax. Uh, my, I'm with North Greenville University in, in, Greenville, South, in Greenville, South Carolina. I'll be facilitating this session with some excellent folks here from the, college, uh, from the colleges that want to tell you students all about uh, getting involved on campus in various ways. Uh, this is going to be recorded, so it's going to be available on demand as well, and it will go all the way until uh, 2.45. So uh, I'm gonna hand it off to you guys now uh, to go ahead and start sharing with these students. And if I can be of assistance, uh, just let me know. It's all yours. Actually, let me I'll, let me offer this. Can we start with just um, everyone unmuting themselves? And uh, Madeline, if you would just introduce yourself first, and we'll go Madeline, Christine, Taylor, Macy, and William. Uh, so we'll just start there with introductions. Yes, yeah, so, sorry about that. My name is Madeline Hux. I'm from Western Carolina University. Uh, my name is Christine Shannon. I am an admissions recruiter from Winthrop University. And my name is Taylor Forbes, and I am the Senior Admissions Counselor at East Tennessee State University. Hi guys, my name is Macy Gaither. I'm a Freshman Admissions Counselor from USC Upstate. Hello, my name is Will Cooper. I am an Undergraduate Admissions Counselor at Erskine College. All right, so we'll go ahead and get started on our presentation uh, for getting involved in clubs and organizations on campus. So, like I said, my name is Madeline Hux. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions at Western Carolina University. I am a 2019 alum, so I was involved in a lot of clubs and organizations on campus. So if you have questions specifically about any of them, feel free to reach me at my email or my phone number. Some quick facts about Western. We are located in Cullowee, North Carolina. This is about an hour or west of Asheville. We are a public university in the UNC system. As well, we have about 12,000 students. We have over 170 clubs and organizations on campus. As well, we were named the Top Outdoor Adventures College four years in a row. Uh, with that being said, we do have a lot of opportunities for students to get out and get involved um, in nature, whether that's our cycling uh, club or even if you're wanting to do rock climbing or we have a number a number of other opportunities uh, to get you outdoors into our um, Blue Ridge Parkway as well. So how to get involved on Western's campus specifically, you can get involved by going to Valley Valley Who. I know that's a mouthful but basically this is a college fair for your clubs and organizations on and around campus. Now, disclaimer, this picture was taken before COVID-19. Um, however, this is an example of what um, our Valley Valley Who would look like. This is a great way for you to meet other students as well as get to know uh, what exactly we do offer on and off campus. We do have a number of academic clubs and organizations. Some of those include our chemistry club, our dental club. We also have biology, criminal justice. Uh, there's a number of them available online. If you have questions, like I said, feel free to reach out to me. We also have club sports. This includes football, basketball, softball, baseball, rugby, climbing, and cycling. We also offer a number of Greek life opportunities. Some, of, some examples are Sigma Chi, Delta Zeta, Alpha Phi Alpha, as well as Lambda Pi Chi, which is a new sorority that we have in place for our uh, Latinx students. We also have a number of unique opportunities. For example, our Pride of the Mountains marching band. We are 500 members strong with this uh, organization. And so with this, it's a great way to meet new people, create your own little family and just have fun performing on the football field or um, at our basketball games. Uh, some other unique opportunities are Quidditch and Pokemon Go. If you're wanting to learn more about uh, some other opportunities and maybe we don't offer the exact club that you're looking for, you're more than welcome to start your own. All you would need is 15 other students as well as a faculty or staff member to help you get that set up. And with that, I'll go ahead and um, let Winthrop talk about some of their clubs and organizations on and around campus. Thank you. Um, so again, like I said before, my name is Christine Shannon. Um, I am an admissions recruiter from Winthrop University. And you can go ahead to the next slide really quick. Thank you. Um, so just a brief overview of what Winthrop is, who we are. Um, we are a public university. We're located in Rock Hill, South Carolina. 
We were founded in 1886 and we have about 6,000 undergraduate students. Within that 6,000, about 1,000 of them are first time freshman students. Um, we have about a 91% undergraduate student placement rate after graduation. This is for uh, graduate school or with a career within six months. Um, our class size average is about 21, so it's fairly small. And we have about a 13 to one student faculty ratio. And we also have about 46 undergraduate majors. So kind of what this is all about, how can you get involved in clubs and organizations? Um, specifically at Winthrop, we have an office for that. So it's called our Office of Student Activities. Um, if you maybe miss one of our fall and spring involvement fairs, you can definitely contact this office at any point throughout the year um, and sit down and talk with them. They can tell you all of our organizations that we have um, and kind of how to get in contact with them. Also, like I just mentioned, you can attend one of our fall and spring involvement fairs. They happen at the beginning of each semester and almost all of our organizations are represented at all of these fairs and it's just a good time to kind of get to go table to table, um, talk to all the club members, see what their club is about um, and ask them any questions on how to get involved. Also just talking to your friends, your classmates, even your professors um, because we do have faculty advisors with all of our organizations so even your professors know of organizations on campus. Um, it's definitely just a great way to see what your friends are involved in um, and see if you can get involved in any of those organizations too. So at Winthrop, we have about 160 student organizations total. Um, and that plus is there because our organizations are always growing every year. Um, these are just a list of some of the different types of organizations we offer. Um, so we have about eight cultural organizations. We do have Greek life on campus. These are um, examples are AD Pi, so Alpha Del Delta Pi, um, Delta Zeta, Chi Omega, um, Alpha Kappa Alpha, um, and several others as well. So we have about 18 national Greek organizations. We do have club sports as well for students who want to maybe play sports in high school and they want to continue that to college and they want to kind of have that competitive edge still. We do have club sports. Um, we also have 18 departmental organizations. These are more academic based. So things such as finance club, um, athletic training club, kind of those organizations. We also have religious organizations on campus. So these are Methodist, Baptist, Catholic, and a few others. We do have professional organizations for students um, who want to kind of build their professional skill sets um, and also work on their resumes um, and get ready for internships, um, kind of things like that, prepare themselves for life after college. And we do have service organizations for students who want to continue volunteer work, maybe from high school to college and also political organizations as well. So these are just some of um, examples of the organizations we have at Winthrop. In the top left corner, we have our Winthrop admissions ambassadors. They actually help out within our admissions office, give daily tours um, and talk to potential students, uh, answer any questions they have. In the top middle, we have one of our softball club sports. They just won a tournament. Um, the top right is one of our dance organizations. They get to audition for this and perform during Christmas time in our Rock Hill Parade. Also the bottom left, we do have equestrian at Winthrop. So this is a club sport as well. Our bottom middle is one of our fraternities on campus. And then our bottom right is one of our um, student organizations called SEEK. They are at one of our club fairs. Also, if you don't come to, if you come to Winthrop, you don't see anything that you like for an organization, you can definitely create one. Um, I'm also an alumni of Winthrop. That's actually what I did during my time. I created a Disney interest organization. Um, and it's just a great way to kind of see who else is interested um, in, in your club and you get to meet friends that way as well. So some of the reasons why you should get involved in clubs and organizations is that it's a great way to make new friendships and experience new experiences. Um, these friendships can lead to roommates, potential connections, and also just lifelong friends. Also, it's a great way to explore your new interests. 
Um, you can try out different things. You can try out paintball. You can try out Disney. Um, you can try out, try out equestrian, um, different things like that. And also, these are accessible to you. Otherwise, they might not be able to for certain instances. Um, so it's a great way to kind of try out new things and see what you like. Also, it uh, helps you develop skill sets that are applicable um, to the rest of your lives. And these can be professional skills, especially. You get to learn responsibility, time management skills, organizational skills, and teamwork as well. Um, and these are highly sought after for internships and jobs as well from future employers. These also, you can hold leadership roles within your organizations and kind of get that experience um, with having a leadership role if you haven't had one before. And it's just an awesome way to have a well-rounded college experience. You get to look back afterwards and say that you did all these things that might not have been available to you otherwise. But with that being said, if you all have any questions um, at all about our organizations at Winthrop University, how to get involved, um, definitely feel free to contact me. You can take a picture of the screen really quickly. Um, you can email me or contact my office phone and I can definitely answer any questions that you have. Um, but other than that, thank you for listening and I'm going to go ahead and um, turn it over to Macy. Hi guys, um, once again, my name is Macy Gaither, freshman admissions counselor from the University of South Carolina Upstate. Definitely glad you guys could join us today. Um, so I'm gonna give you a little bit of information about the University of South Carolina Upstate. Um, yeah, you go to the next slide. Um, so the University of South Carolina Upstate is a regional comprehensive university that offers over 45 degree programs. We are a medium sized college, so we have about 6,000 students currently enrolled. Um, we were ranked number one top public regional college in the South by the U.S. News and Reports. Um, also, we were ranked among colleges of distinction. We were ranked number three for lowest debt burden and also number 11 for ethnic diversity. Um, so our application is currently open, so you guys can go ahead and start applying. Um, so a little bit about our organization. So how to get involved. So your first week here, we do have an actual fair for students to see all of the clubs and organizations that we offer here on campus. Um, so it's usually during a time where students are changing classes up until the last um, time for the classes to end. So you will have time to go speak to the different organizations, um, sign up on their checklist, and then you can attend their first meeting to get a feel for the organization. And if you decide that you want to continue on, you just have to continue going to the meetings. That way you can be a part of that organization. Um, another way is to attend what we call the Upstate 48. So that's your first 48 days here on the Upstate campus. There'll be an event hosted by an organization um, of of the various organizations that we have. So sometimes it's one event through that day, or maybe it'd be like two or three events hosted throughout the day um, by the different organizations and clubs that we have here on campus. Um, the last option to get involved, uh, you can contact the Student Life Office of Student Involvement um, directly and get information from them about the different organizations that we have here on campus and how to contact the president of those organizations to get involved with them. Just the next slide. Thank you. So we have over 90 student organizations, um, as well as if we don't have an organization that you want, you are free to start an organization here on campus. It just takes three students to agree on an idea for an organization. You can get advised by a staff member or a faculty member here, and then you can start that organization here on campus. Um, some examples of the organization we have is the Student Government Association, um, Campus Activities Board, community service organizations, the American Sign Language organizations, and Collegiate Curls. Um, some of the events that Campus Activities Board hosts is our Spring Fest, uh, which is like a big concert event. Rocktoberfest is which is like a big carnival that's open to not only our students, but also to the public. We also have a stadium party where all our athletics come out and you get to meet and greet with them. And we also have Greek life um, here on campus, so our fraternities and sororities as well. Go to the next slide. So this is a few pictures of some of the events that our organizations have. Um, so like I said, we do have great life. Um, our campus activities board do have paint parties. They have drive-in movies. Um, 
So of course, for COVID reasons, um, we have different um, fitness classes and then a field day is hosted by campus activities board. Our student government association has different lunch and breakfast with the chancellor events that students can come to. So it's a lot of different things for you guys to get involved in. Um, reasons why we try and encourage students to get involved is because it's just a great way to start your freshman year off. It's a great way to network, um, meet friends outside of the classroom, um, and just to enjoy your college experience. Next slide. Your next slide, thank you. And so to apply, you can go to our USC Upstate website. Um, also, our codes for SAT or ACT is also on there. If you do have any questions, you can feel free to contact me. I'm Macy Gaither. That's my contact information. Or Eric, Mr. Eric Chapman. He is our uh, Director of Freshman Admissions. And then one of us will be happy to assist you. So we're going to turn it over to our next school. All right, hey guys, this is Will Cooper again, uh, speaking to you briefly about Erskine College and some of the opportunities we have on campus. One thing I do need to specify is that a lot of people hear that name Erskine and wonder where the heck we're located. And you should know that if you are an upstate South Carolina student, we're about an hour in south of Greenville and we're in between Anderson and Greenwood and we're one hour and a half from Columbia. So we're a small school in a rural town, which makes it kind of quiet and peaceful, but we're also pretty strategically located between several big cities. Now to give you the general profile of Erskine, you have it on this slide right here. We are a small liberal arts Christian college and those are basically the facets we have held to always since being established in 1839 and we think what kind of makes us unique as a hired institution in upstate South Carolina. And they notice our size right there is only 900 students. And so when I say small, we are definitely the epitome of it and it's something we deeply value just because it allows for a great sense of community a lot of one-on-one -on -one relationships and then the opportunity to get involved. I myself am a 2013 graduate of Erskine and the closest friends I have from graduating almost nine years ago now are the ones that I did extracurricular organizations with and that I lived with in the dorms and studied with. Now to kind of re-emphasize that small classroom size we value so much, you see the 11 to 1 student faculty ratio, meaning professors can have an open door policy with you, they can be your advocates and they can be your closest advisors. And then largely due to the accessibility you have with our professors, that's how you get that really, really strong statistic right there below it of 98% of our students being accepted into their chosen graduate program. And then within that statistic, we also have 95% of students who go to med school accepted into their first choice program. Then we do have 20 majors and 27 minors, as it says there. And we are also a top-notch regional school in the American South, according to US News and World Report, we were ranked fourth on their most, listened, um, their most recent listing. Next slide, go ahead. All right, so this question of how to get involved, um, a lot of students hear what size we are and wonder if as a small school, there's actually as much as you can do at a big school. Uh, big schools have wonderful opportunities and they are excellent institutions, especially those we have represented here in this panel. The good thing is small schools have just as many extracurricular organizations or at least a comparable number. So you see here at Erskine, we have over 30. So there's plenty of things you can do. One thing that's unique about Erskine is that we are a self-governing student body, meaning we have student government association and student Christian association leading both extracurricular life and spiritual life. And so you can get involved in one of those boards as a student leader and be in charge of the venues, the concerts, the events, and the activities that we bring in. For example, SGA this year is doing a foam party and a taco truck that students are really enjoying. And like SCA before has brought in popular Christian bands like Casting Crowns and Need to Breathe. We'll move on to the next slide. All right, with respect to what happens on a week by week basis, we've got a really good hands-on and relational director of campus activities named Sarah Smith. And her full-time job is just to help students get involved and really find their place at Erskine and enjoy their experience. And so you get an update from her every single week, usually the first thing on Monday, explaining what you can do as students for that week. And you'll notice it's a wide variety of things. We recently had our kickball tournament hosted by the Erskine Fellowship of Athletes. And that was a huge hit among students. They had several teams 
register and they just went to town on each other and kickball and it was a ton of fun. And then you'll notice there we had a recent capture the flag tournament and we'll have different events like that, which students will do. And sometimes those come from Sarah Smith, uh, a personal thing she conceives of, but oftentimes these are purely student led events that kid, kids who are here go out, want to do themselves, they do the groundwork, they get permission for it, they execute it and they get their peers involved. And it's one way to become a leader on campus. And it's one way also just to have a lot of fun here in our small little town. Go to the next slide, please. All right, so two areas that we specifically like to emphasize for extracurricular life are our campus ministries one and then our music, which we'll talk about in the next slide. But staying just here for a second, we have three primary ministries here at Erskine. One is Baptist Collegiate Ministries at Erskine. One is the Erskine Fellowship of Christian Athletes. And the other one is Reform University here at Erskine College. And so each of these groups are associated with a different denomination or organization that has established a branch here at Erskine to do spiritual outreach at Erskine. And so they'll be here to work with SCA and our campus chaplain in order to make sure that you guys are being engaged spiritually since we want to balance extracurricular life with spiritual life and do so responsibly as a Christian college. Each of these organi organizations will do different things. For example, BCM has a worship service every Thursday night that about 10 to 20 people participate in. And then they also have movie nights, game nights, mission trips, and service projects throughout the year. RUF at Erskine actually meets at a local pastor's barn, literally on Sunday evenings, where students go for a worship session to play games, do a cookout. And whenever they hear the word preach, they literally sit on hay bales in his barn and students absolutely love it. It's one of the biggest gatherings we have week by week at Erskine. And then the Fellowship of Christian Athletes did that kickball tournament we talked about. They have a lot of outreach here. And because we have a lot of student athletes at Erskine, we're division two school, that's particularly appealing to a lot of our students. And all of these are student led, but you also have pastors and faculty members advising you as well in order to provide the guidance these need to be to remain strong organizations. We go to the next slide. All right, and then just really quickly, last couple of slides here. Another area we like to emphasize is our music program. If you wanna be involved in music as a major at Erskine or just as a passion, you can actually be singing in our choir like the core leaders, the people you see there in the black clothes, or you can be playing in our symphonia, the people you see there playing the cellos and the bass from freshman year onward on the stage performing and actually be a part of a very, very active music program. We've even had students before who have composed their own songs for the program and they've been sung by core leaders and they've been played by the symphonia band there. These groups also get to travel in recent years. Uh, choral leaders have been to Lithuania to sing at churches there. And a lot of churches, a lot of people have enjoyed that. They've been to Scotland as well. Go ahead. All right, so just to wrap up here, um, all of us have mentioned some basic benefits that you get from being involved in extracurricular life. And I would just emphasize these four very quickly. By doing, a, by doing extracurricular organizations, especially being invested in like two or three and doing them well, you can make the college experience your own. It keeps you from just being locked in your dorm room all the time and you can actually get into campus life and have a good four years. You build lasting friendships, like I was saying, because that's how you spend time with people outside of the classroom and outside of studying. You develop professional skills, particularly communication and leadership skills, which are necessary for uh, real life once you have your degree. For example, one student we had recently was just hired as a regional director for the Fellowship of Christian Athletes because he led it here at Erskine on his own for two years and they wanted to make him a part of the organization. And then on-campus job opportunities, more what I mean by that is a lot of times different departments have budgets to hire their own student workers. Like we have student ambassadors here in our admissions office and oftentimes to offer a student a job, we're looking for how involved they are. And to get one of those, being a leader of an extracurricular organization really helps you stand out. Next slide. And this is where I'll end here. Just if you have any questions about Erskine, I'm happy to help you out. Like I said, I'm a 2013 graduate. I've been an admissions counselor for four years, so I can use that experience to help you all out with whatever you need. Here's my phone number. Here's my email address. Just reach out if you need absolutely anything. And now I'll go ahead and pass it on to Taylor. Hey, everybody. Um, thanks for tuning in today. Um, I'm the last college, so I'll try to take us home. But my name is Taylor. I'm one of the admissions counselors here at ETSU. I'm just going to go over a really quick view so you have some perspective um, of what ETSU is like. We're located in Johnson City, Tennessee. So that's going to be an hour north of Asheville or an hour west of Boone. 
So right on the North Carolina and Tennessee border. We are a four-year public university. We're a division one school. We compete in the Southern Conference. We have almost 15,000 students. Our average class size is 23, and we have a faculty to student ratio of 15 to one. So we're what I call, call like a Goldilocks school. We're not too big where you're gonna, you know, be, become a number or anything like that, but we're also not, not super small where um, you might miss out on some of those student experiences. We offer over 150 plus um, programs, anything from our ETSU Health, where we offer more comprehensive health science programs than any other college in the United States, except for Ohio State. And we have over 250 student organizations. Next slide. And an overview of those student organizations, like the others have said, it's awesome to get involved if you can when you're in college. It enriches your experience. It statistically, you're more likely to graduate on time and enjoy your college experience. I was really involved as a student. I was in a fraternity as well as our student government and a few other organizations. We have 250, like I said before, they range from Greek life to intramurals, pre-professional programs, honor societies, service learning organizations, as well as social organizations or organizations that are based around certain hobbies. And so next slide. And to get involved in these clubs, it's really simple. It sounds similar to other schools, whereas your first week of school, we're gonna have an organization expo. So you get to go in, all 250 plus organizations are, are there. They set up a booth, you get to walk around and kind of pick the rep's brain and figure out what organization you wanna be a part of. We also have a Buck Hub, which is our student organization website. You can log on there to view all the different student organizations and how to get involved. A contact is listed, so all you gotta do is either follow them on Instagram or you can shoot them an email and they'll tell you more information on how to get involved. We have a, a pretty good sized Greek life. About 20% of our student population is in Greek life. We have six IFC fraternities as well as six MPHC fraternities and sororities and five Panhellenic sororities. So pretty diverse. We do have uh, fraternity housing on campus as well as off campus and sorority housing on campus. Next slide. We have a pretty large intramural system. We play almost year round other than two months in the summer. So in the fall, you're looking at things like flag football, volleyball, dodgeball, um, even board games, ping pong, racquetball, that sort of thing. We have basketball um, as well as inner tube water polo, uh, battleship, if you guys are familiar with battleship, as well as club sports. So if you're interested in playing lacrosse, wrestling, um, our, our cycling team and any of our club sports, that's also an option. Next slide. We have pre-professional programs. So if you're interested in something like our pre-law society, our nursing club, or even becoming a part of our robotics team, then there's tons of options for you there. We do have honor societies. So if you're interested in becoming involved in organizations that can lead to jobs or at least help you bolster your resume, we've got those available as well. Next slide. We do offer service learning organizations. So if you're interested, I'm sure many of you have heard about Habitat for Humanity or Appalachian Service Project. We do have those organizations on campus that students can volunteer with. We have several different faith-based organizations. So if you're interested in any, anything like Young Life or FCA, we have those on campus and they're really active. So that's a, always a fun thing to be a part of. Next slide. And then we have organizations that we call social organizations. So if you're interested in just making friends or getting out and meeting people with, with common interest, we have everything from like video game clubs to board, certain board games have their own clubs. And so you can get involved that way. And it's a really great place to start. We do have a Quidditch club, which mo most other schools have, as well as um, tons of stuff that you can get involved with. Many of our students will have, um, several different clubs that they're a part of, whether that's SGA or we call it Polo Preview Orientation Leaders, as well as Intramurals, Greek Life, and all of that stuff. So here's my contact information. If you guys want more information about ETSU and our student organizations, you're more than welcome to give me a call. You can shoot me an email. You can apply by going to etsu.edu apply. 
and to stay up to date with everything, especially if you don't like to check your email, you can follow us on Instagram at ETSU Admissions. Hi, has everybody uh, been able to, to present thus far? Good, just checking the Q&A and no questions thus far. So uh, panelists, thank you. I'm gonna share my screen here so uh, we can get just a little bit of housekeeping to finish up. Um, so to, uh, to students out there, thanks for, thanks for watching. If you watch this later, uh, when you do close the window, there'll be a quick survey. So we appreciate uh, any feedback you can provide on that survey. You can also find more sessions like this at cacro.org, that's C-A-C-R-A-O.org. Uh, -R Actually, since we have time, I think there was a question came in. Um, does anyone want to talk through uh, any LGBTQ plus clubs or organizations on your campus? I'm going to come back to you guys so we can uh, have you guys uh, speak to that. Anyone want to speak to that? Yeah, so at Western Carolina, we ask actually have an office called the Intercultural Affairs Office. Um, while it is just an office, we also have another, another like programs and like people that you can talk to uh, based around the LGBTQ community. Um, so if you wanted to talk to them about how to get involved um, or just go and hang out, they have really comfy chairs and they typically have a bowl of candy and stuff. That way you can meet other people uh, within our um, diversity office. And you're similar in that. We're similar in that at ETSU where we, we, we have, we call it the Multicultural Center, um, but they have all kinds of clubs. Many of the LGBTQ plus clubs will have events on campus, which is really great because it increases awareness on our campus and it's just an all around, usually they're really cool events. I also saw that you asked if there's any D&D clubs. We do have a Dungeons and Dragons club on campus, which is pretty cool. I didn't know what it meant, so I couldn't ask. I didn't know what D&D was, so thank you, Taylor. Um, and thank you, Samantha, for that question. Um, for those that do watch, this will be available in about a week over at caco.org, so you can find uh, that on demand there. Thank you to Madeline, Taylor, Macy, Christine, Will. Thanks for taking the time, guys. Bye, everybody.